In today's video, we'll be learning a little bit about poems or poetry. So whenever you see a poem, what's the first thing that you notice? The structure? Now all poems have a particular structure. They might be made of three lines in every stanza, four lines or groups of five lines, or even seven or eight or nine lines all at once. Now, there are different types of structures that a poem could have. Let's take a look at them. Now, before we move on to the forms of poetry that we have, the structure basically can be talked about in terms of stanza. Now, the stanza are a group of lines in a poem which are separated by um, a space in between. So, for example, a poem could have three stanzas. They're similar to the paragraphs that we see in normal writing passages. So, the stanza is the unit of the poem. Now, there are different forms of poems that we have uh, based on what they describe or what they talk about. We have the lyric poems. The lyric poems are when a single speaker is talking about very strong emotions, thoughts, and feelings. That is what we call lyric poetry. Then we have narrative poetry, which is more like a story. So it is based on telling a story and it has strong um, a strong sense of character, of plot, and of storytelling feature about them. The descriptive poems, on the other hand, describe the world around the speaker or the poet. So those are the descriptive poems. Now, apart from these, we have subsets such as an ode. So a poem can be an ode, it's said to be an ode, when it talks about um, a serious topic and it is a type of lyric poem. We have an elegy. The elegy is a poem about someone that has passed away and it is written in a more serious tone and um, it talks about mourning the dead person. The sonnet, on the other hand, is a short rhyming poem and it comes under a lyric poem with specifically 14 lines. So it has a very fixed structure. Uh, a ballad is a type of narrative poem. So it tells a story and it has a sing-songy pattern to it. So it's rhythmic and it sounds more like, it can be sung actually. Uh, then we have an epic. Now epics are again narrative poems. So they tell a story and they're written about the adventures or achievements of a hero or, uh, and they're written in a very formal or celebratory tone. So they're uh, celebrating the achievements of a person or of a hero or of uh, somebody. Uh, a limerick is, uh, it has also a very fixed structure and it has a certain specific rhyming scheme of A, A, B, B, A. So the first two lines and the last fifth line of a particular stanza will have, the, will have a rhyming scheme. And in between the two, uh, the third and the fourth lines will be rhyming. So here we had the different types of structures that we can have for poems. So next time when you uh, look through, when you read a poem, make sure that you understand what form of poetry it is um, in case you're asked about that in your test. We've already learned a little bit about poems and their forms and their structure. Now we'll take a look at the rhyme scheme. Now the rhyme scheme is basically the pattern of rhyme that a poem follows. So for instance, if you have a normal rhyme like um, let's say we have twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. So all of these words at the end are rhyming words. And what is the pattern of rhyme or what is the rhyme scheme of this stanza in the poem? Star and R are rhyming. So I can denote these rhyming words using alphabets. So I can say that A and A are two rhyming words and high and sky are rhyming, so this is B and B. So I can say that the rhyme scheme of this stanza is A, A, B, B. Or I could use small letters as well, A, A, B, B. So this would be then my rhyme scheme. So let's take a look at the kinds of, there are many different types of rhyming schemes that poets use in their poems. But uh, let's take a look at a few of them just to get a hang of what rhyme schemes are. So first we have an alternate rhyme. This is a very common one where we have A, B, A, B rhyme scheme. So you have the first line, the word at the first, end of the first line, and the third line matching. So this first and the third. And the second and the fourth lines will then rhyme. So if I say sky, and here it ends with a high, here I have low and go. So imagine that these were the lines in a particular stanza in a poem. 
if the first line and the third line rhyme and the second line and the fourth line rhyme, that would be an A, B, A, B or an alternate rhyme scheme. Now we have the uh, ballad, which is the which is made up of three stanzas and you have the rhyme scheme A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, B, C, B, C. So here you can actually um, take a look at different examples of ballads and uh, see how the rhyme scheme works. Uh, a mono rhyme on the other hand will have a rhyme scheme where the end of all of the lines will be in will be rhyming with each other. So every single line will end with a word that is rhyming with the next. So they have an A, 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 A continuous for all of the lines. A couplet is a two line stanza poem. So it has uh, a single stanza will only have two lines. So then it'll have a space one and two, one and two, one and two. And you have the rhyme scheme where both these lines and a single stanza will rhyme. So it's A, A, B, B, C, C and etc. as you go on. A triplet is similar to a couplet, only that in this case the triplet will have uh, sets of three. So here you might have A, A, A and then B, 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 then C, C, C in that sense. Uh, you have a closed rhyme. A closed rhyme, uh, rhyme is made up of the rhyming scheme A, B, B, A. So the first and the fourth uh, lines will be rhyming and the second and the third lines will be rhyming. That would be an enclosed rhyme. Then we have a limerick. We already saw what a limerick is. It is made up of five lines in each stanza. So every stanza has five lines and it has a rhyme scheme A, A, B, B, A. So the first two lines and the last line of a single stanza will rhyme and the, sec and the third and the fourth lines in the stanza will rhyme. So we've just looked at a few of the different types of rhyme schemes that we have. Um, an easy way to determine the rhyme scheme is just to look at which words rhyme with each other. So you read the poem and then for each stanza you try to figure out which words are rhyming with each other and then you mark them with an alphabet or a letter and then you see what the rhyme scheme is for each stanza.